Fui a goda que eu chequeiro me mandado me chamar Pra dar vedo xangoledos pra poder movadear Pra poder movadear, pra poder movadear Pirimbada me chamando e eu não posso demorar Thanks and praise, welcome back everybody I want to acknowledge my horrible singing on the last episode O oh, sim, 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 on oh, now, 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 is the fundamental first song for every capoeira player. And with so many things in life, your first is your worst. The F and the W are interchangeable, so your first is your worst. You should only get better with time. O oh, sim, 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 oh, now, 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 is my worst song still. My first song is still my worst song. So, I just wanted to acknowledge that, yeah, my voice cracks every time on that song. Just like my first day. It's pretty fun. Uh, also, I recorded this entire episode with the biggest booger hanging out of my nose ever. It was gigantic. And I did not even realize it. I did the whole episode. And the whole time, I'm talking about Polyphemus and intruders in the cave. The irony was out of control. I couldn't even handle it. And the booger was gigantic. How did I not see it? It was a big unibooger. <laughs> the whole episode. So I had to scratch it. <laughs> I had to throw that out. All right. Uh, but it was a great episode. Uh, so I'm going to try my best to recap on, on the vision here. Uh, part of what I wanted to focus on starting off was on Scrappy-Doo. And I want to uh, relate how Scrappy-Doo is a great example and also the ambiguity of identifying this Aeon card is uh, common. It's very common. This is a very um, elusive uh, figure, the Aeon. Uh, all whatever about Aleister Crowley with this card, whatever, whatever. This is a stellar tableau. All that aside, you know, this is a star map. These are star maps. These are, uh, yeah. They're not what Crowley was talking about. These are star maps. This is uh, essentially, uh, if the Hierophant is the constellation of Orion, uh, then the Aeon card is almost an amalgam of its coterminal. Uh, constellations. And that word coterminal is a very, very helpful uh, concept, especially in uh, interpreting art into its astrological significance. And Aeon is a great example of this because I know that it's Auriga, uh, Hephaestus, Vulcan, Erichthonius. It's all of these uh, wounded uh, innovators. Uh, a lot of folks would say Chiron. There's some Chiron in there. Uh, you know, uh, Hephaestus or Vulcan uh, is cast down to Earth twice, goes through a double injury. First time lands in water, gains mastery of elements, invents boats for the first time, uh, gets affluence on the land, inv invents wagons and chariots, and then is returned into the good graces of Olympus and gets thrown out a second time. So he's kind of a double... XX. He's a double injured. He's double vaxxed. Greta Tintin, right? Now, this card comes out in other incarnations relating to constellations very near Auriga, the charioteer. I'm going to pull out the map for this. I just want to be as clear as I can that generally I perceive Auriga to be the charioteer, to be the Aeon card, and also to signify one of the best um, uh, uh, geometric forms. It's, a, it's generally considered a pentagram shape, but this pentagram is inside of uh, what's called uh, the hexagram, the great hexagram. Oh, it's got a, there's a, it's got a different name. But there's a pentagram inside of a larger hexagram that includes a bunch of other asterisms. So there's asterisms inside of asterisms. And Orion himself is actually a pentagram stacked on top of a hexagram in a certain light. 
So the five and the six is right here and it's cut down the middle. The five and the six is divided by the ecliptic plane, the belt, this, this very important envy raiment, the belt of envy raiment. Um, so if this is Auriga, which is the Aeon card, and I'm claiming that this is um, Scrappy-Doo, I want to point out that Canis Minor is right here. They're not exactly coterminal, um, but they are all coterminal to Orion. And here is Lepus, the bunny rabbit. Uh, Lepus, the bunny rabbit, is actually a hail to uh, the Isle of Man, which is fascinating because the Canis Major and Minor, what are they thinking all the time? I love man. They love man. That's why they don't need a leash. They're loyal. They're faithful. They stick to him. On the moon card, there are two types of dogs. One is a tame dog that is sitting, and the other dog is an untamed dog that is standing up and ready to go. These are not just hailing to Canis Minor and Major. This is hailing to Canis Major and Minor as the, as the uh, tame dog who is sitting. Canis, uh, the other dog on the moon card is Canis Venetici, who is on a leash. Canis Venetici is on a leash, and this is an anagram for Vatican science. And one of these dogs has uh, a little heart charm on its back that signifies King Charles. So when we say two dogs, everybody goes to Canis Major and Canis Minor and thinks it's a devi uh, deviation between those two. I think those are one pair. This is the other pair. One is in the spring, one is in the fall. So everybody puts a lot of energy on uh, Sirius the dog star. It is more complicated than that. It's more complicated than that. And the reason this is getting kind of fun is because Scooby-Doo, the mascots, are uh, multiple dogs. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of bring some of the uh, width and breadth of correspondences together around this Aeon card. And when I claim that it is Ratatouille, when I claim that it's this little mascot, uh, this tiny little... Uh, uh, hyperactive, uh, over, over idealist, was it, uh, too high of an ideal. Um, these are hallmarks to look for, uh, to indicate other characters that will be a, a, a repackaging of this archetype. Also, holding Scrappy Doo back all the time because he wants to fight and they have to just grab him up by his collar. This also signifies, um, these, these, uh, Shackles on the character signify the lunar standstill, which is hailed by uh, oxbow sign or the cobra's glyph on the hood of a cobra. That is the sign of the lunar standstills. And it, there is a lunar standstill in this location, right? By Lepus, the Canis Major and Minor, and Auriga, the Charioteer. All of these things are right here. And that's why they're always holding Scrappy-Doo back, is because the lunar standstills are a uh, they're a centripetal extension. It's like the furthest out before it comes back. And so that's what Scrappy-Doo is always being restrained for. For Scooby-Dum to be signified by Polyphemus is absolutely profound because he has the monocle. Uh, also, it is in the cave of Polyphemus where there is, he makes, where Odysseus makes two dumb decisions. He makes the first dumb decision is he sticks around. He could have left the cave but he thought that maybe the owner of the cave would come and give him, um, treat him with uh, the rules of hospitality, hospitality. And when he finds out that this Polyphemus doesn't care about hospitality, he's a, a child of uh, Neptune. Uh, that's when he uh, thinks he's smart. He's going to play this smart. And he tells him, my name is nobody. Uh, but then later on, he makes another dumb decision when he tells him his actual name and gives him possession of an artifact that belongs to Odysseus, his name. Apostrophe S is the sign of possession. Now, I say this, and it sounds like I'm being mystical and alarming, like, oh, possession is the source of evil. This is the double think. This is the care. You've got to be so careful with this row. This is the double think. Possession is being misused, misapplied in the world. It is a very dangerous tool, this letter S. But possession, the letter S, is your family. The only true possession in this world is family relationship. 